Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Things I've Learned from Barry Harris. Uh, today's episode and probably the next few episodes are going to be centered around the standard How High the Moon or Charlie Parker's Ornithology. Um, I think today we'll look at the scales for it and then in the upcoming episodes we'll talk about how to comp using uh, Barry's uh, six diminished scale of chords. So, um, okay, let's get started. So the first scale you're gonna need to know how to play, since it's in the key of G, is a G major seven scale. Then you're gonna have to know a C seven scale. Then you're gonna have to know an F, se F major scale, F major seven scale. Then you're gonna have to know a B flat seven scale. And then it's gonna play E flat major scale up. Now this is where it gets a little different. It's going to be F7 down to the third of D. And then we're going to play a G minor six scale up. And remember the G minor six has the uh, flat six and the major six in it. And we're going to play that up and down. Now that's going to be um, then we're going to play G major 7 up and down to the 3rd of E. And then we're going to play D7 up and down. Okay, so that's going to be the first half of How High the Moon. So if we played it together, it would be 1, 2, 3, and... next half of the song is going to be identical, G major up, G major 7 up and down, C7 up and down, F major 7 up and down, B flat 7 up and down, uh, E flat major up, F7 down to the third D, but now instead of playing G minor 6, you're going to play G major scale up, <clears throat> and then you're going to play F7 scale up. So the end of that would be... F7, and now it's just going to be two turnarounds, so you're going to play G major up, D7 up, G major up, D7 up. Okay, let's try it with the metronome. We have it at about 85. So remember, that's two and four. At least that's how I like it. So two, one, two, three, and... Anything else, you have to learn the little tricky spots within the song. Uh, one of the tricky spots right away is running a G major scale into a C7 scale. That's the very first change. So you got G major <clears throat> for two measures, and then it goes right to G minor to C7. But through Barry's method, you just think G major running into C7. So that's one of the tricky spots that you have to learn how to look into. So if we said... So I think I started half steps. And then when I got down to the fifth of the G major, it had already turned into C7. So I just... The, the fifth of the G is also the second of the C. So I just ran down... 
<clears throat> two more half steps, and then I did something from the flat seven. I don't remember exactly what it was. But that's a way to run G major into C7. And then you're going to do the same type of thing running F major into B flat seven. It's the same idea, it's just down a whole step. Now, this tricky spot where you're playing E flat major, and then all of a sudden to A half diminished to D7. Now, here's a really important movement. Barry says this movement is uh, E flat major, the diminished E flat six with the six in the bass, uh, uh, C minor seven with the seven in the bass, and then A half diminished, which is like uh, C minor six to D seven G minor. So listen to that change. So on that little spot is where a lot of these little nice little phrases come from, where you can actually play uh, E flat major, then a diminished, and then a, a, a minor. So let's see if I get up to it. Let's see, starting on. It's like E flat major going to the relative minor, ending up in the relative minor, putting in a seven in the bass, and then putting a six in the bass. Super important change happens in a lot of songs. It's a really nice movement to practice playing. I don't know who told me this. Somebody told me once, and I've never heard it, but somebody said that there is a practice tape of bird practicing, and he's practicing little two and four bar things. So I can only imagine that this is probably the kind of thing that, I mean, I wouldn't claim to know what he would be thinking, but this is kind of, I bet this is the kind of thing that he'd be looking at, you know, like running through these movements. Very interesting. So um, there's a lot here to look at for How High the Moon. Now the next episode we're going to get to, I'm going to talk about um, the chords and comping behind it. And I think those are also, those will be helpful because I, I noticed in some of the comments that people were wondering how to use the scale of chords when comping. So this will be an example. I used it earlier um, in some earlier episodes to talk about yesterday's, but now we'll talk about using it for uh, How High the Moon, which is a very popular standard. And that means you're going to have to know a lot of different scale of chords. You have to know G6, you're going to have to know D6, you're going to have to know B flat 6, you're going to have to know a lot of things. So anyway, I wanted to keep this one short because uh, I plan on a second episode coming pretty fast. But anyway, enjoy practicing your um, scales for How High the Moon. And I hope that was a little bit helpful. And again, you can leave a comment or a um, suggestion in the bottom. I read them and uh, I'm really enjoying this. So uh, yeah, enjoy practicing your scales for How High the Moon. Thanks. <laughs>